Okay, so the title is Optimizing Real-Time PCR, and this is a focused approach for exceptional results. So this whole presentation is structured around the newly published MIQE guidelines, which was the minimum information for publication of quanti quantitative real-time PCR experiments. The lead author on the paper was Stephen Buston. Uh, some other notable authors are uh, Michael Fassel and Joe Van de Sample, who are also on the paper. And both, uh, all of the authors on this paper um, were writing the MIQE guidelines for two reasons. One is to establish a clear framework to conduct real-time experiments. So to date, um, there has been no set um, framework for designing and running a real-time uh, experiment with samples. And the, the problem that that leads to is a wide variation in the way in which people run their experiments and a lack of understanding as to how the experimental um, protocols that you put into a real-time experiment can dramatically affect the data at the end of the day. So this. This, this publication is designed to show people a structured format. And the second reason is to provide uh, guidelines for reviewers and editors to measure the technical quality of submitted manuscripts. So not only uh, in point one have people used uh, widely varying techniques for doing the experiments, in point two, um, there have been no specific guidelines for the viewers to even review the data that's published with real time, making it very difficult to assure that published data is actually um, of the quality required to even make interpretations of the, of the final data submitted. So these are the guidelines, and this is actually the only table in the published MIQE guidelines. Um, I purposely put, made this slide so that the guidelines were, were not very legible. There are actually 85 of these guidelines, which is quite a number of guidelines for any researcher to actually have to follow during their experiments. So um, myself and some other colleagues within BioRad uh, opted to put together um, a technical bulletin that we published in BioRad, which you can download from the BioRad website. <coughs> to be able to teach uh, folks how to do real-time experiment in eight steps, eight simple steps, that ultimately will meet the major, um, the major guidelines that are in the MIQE guidelines, such that your data will be very high quality and very publishable. So to initiate this discussion, I just wanted to clarify what the uh, reverse transcription qPCR, quantitative PCR approach is. For people who have never done qPCR, basically it is a hypothesis-driven research approach. So we're talking about hypothesis-driven, meaning you know what the expected, or you, you predict what the expected outcome of the experiment is based on previously published data or experiments that you've done previously in the lab. So bottom line is that you know the genes that expect to be upregulated or downregulated under specific conditions with specific samples. So in the very first part of a, of a real-time experiment, you would extract samples from your control and experimental groups, whether they be cells or, or animals. And um, then we look at extracting the RNA from those samples. So we extract the RNA from the samples and purify the RNA. Then the next very important step in the process is to actually analyze the RNA from your sample. So to test actually the quality of the sample, the RNA sample that you're extracting from the organism of interest in terms of its purity and quality. After we know that we have a good RNA sample, we, we could do the reverse transcription experiment, which is essentially converting your total RNA sample into cDNA. Once we've done that conversion, 
it was actually on the cDNA that you run a qPCR experiment for quantitative PCR with with, uh, with the primers you designed for qPCR that you validated prior to, to doing the actual experiment with your unknown samples. And finally, analyze the data. And if it turns out that you're like uh, most other researchers out there, you've probably uh, missed a data point or not done the appropriate drug treatment as we're doing experiments, this is always the case, and you'll need to analyze your data, realize what's missing in the experimental design, and redo the experiment until finally, when you get to the data analysis stage, you're ready to publish your data. So, Stephen Buston and, and the folks who wrote the MyQE guidelines spend a lot of time on this process here. So this whole experimental design and sample management process, starting from the experimental procedure, where you, de where you define very clearly the disease and treatment groups, the target genes implicated in the study, potential reference genes, which are used to normalize uh, for loading of your samples, the control groups, so if we're doing a time course study, perhaps the control group is T0. If it's normal versus disease, perhaps it's normal, untreated versus drug treated, possibly the untreated sample. Then we look at replicates. And there are two types of replicates, which we all need to understand. One of them are biological replicates, which is a which essentially is a different sample per well, meaning a different biological sample. If we're talking about mouse brains, we're talking about three brains extracted from three separate mice from a control group, three separate mice from an from a experimental group, and each of those mouse brains extracted the total RNA separately, and the CN, the reverse transcription experiment, done separately on each brain, such that at the end you end up with cDNA from each of the separate brains, which are three now separate biological replicates for each group. And then you run the qPCR on those. For technical replicates, typically what most people run for technical replicates is they take that cDNA sample that they've extracted from, from that mouse brain or from that sample, and then they, they run three separate qPCR experiments. They, they use the same DNA sample but added into three separate wells of their qPCR plate, and that would be technical replicates. Next is experimental conditions. Here is where we start to start to list the conditions of our experiment that we can control very strictly. And it's important to list these conditions. And once you've listed them, it's important to follow the protocols that you've listed for those conditions. So growth conditions, media, uh, incubation time, or OD of your, of your culture, days of embryonic development, if you work with embryonic cells, amount per mass of drug or compound, the sex or phenotype of your organism's interest, incubation time, uh, if you're incubating cells or tissue or, or any, any type of, uh, any type of uh, organism, even the incubation of, of animals can, uh, can cause the, um, the transcriptome to change. So it's very important to control as many of the controllable experimental conditions as possible, which will minimize your biological variability, those error bars uh, between your samples. Next is sample handling. And under sample handling, there's the precise time to harvest cells or tissues. Sample extraction methods need to be followed strictly, same every time. Preservation methods and, and the amount of time it takes to preserve, to preserve samples, all of these can dramatically affect the uh, transcriptome, the way in which the messenger RNA is being transcribed even after cells have been pelleted or tissue has been excised. And then the thawing homogenization, thawing homogenization procedure leading to the final total RNA extraction. The point of this slide is really to emphasize that all of these steps, with the exception of the total RNA extraction process, um, can be listed and written out in a grid just like this um, at your desk before you've even lifted a pipette. And if you take the time to do this, because qPCR is such a sensitive assay, taking the time to do this will save you time in getting good reproducible data between your biological replicates. 